Hello my friends, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of the Premier League show. Uh, the Premier League, my friends, is going along quite fantastically and it is proving to be quite the season. Uh, today I will be bringing you my match week 21 preview and predictions and of course we usually talk about the last week of uh, fixtures as well as we round those up. So I do hope you're looking forward to that today, my friends. Uh, obviously, the new year is upon us. Do look out for some brand new content uh, this coming week. Not only are you going to get the Premier League show, but you're also going to get Football Manager and a very special weekly waffle. Watch out for that because it's some big thank yous to be said after what has been a sensational year, especially the last six months on the channel and for myself. But without further ado, we've got some massive games. The game of the week is huge and could have massive implications for the Premier League, let's predict match week 21. So here we go, my friends. The first ones we're going to talk about are, of course, the New Year's Day fixtures. Uh, these take place each and every year. Uh, there's only three games taking place on New Year's Day. The other games are taking place on the second and the third, but should be very good viewing. The game of the week is going to be the last one we talk about. It's just the way the cookie has crumbled, but... It makes it very, very interesting. Uh, you will see the three fixtures that are going to be played out on Tuesday, my friends. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is going to take place between Everton and Leicester. Live on Sky Sports, a 12.30 kickoff. If you're doing nothing but sitting around uh, recovering from your hangover, this is probably the best way to start your day. Uh, the last five between these two teams in the Premier League have finished with four wins to Everton, one win to Leicester. Uh, and the last meet was a 2-1 win to Everton earlier on this season. Uh, Everton won the end of a very narrow defeat to Brighton and Hove Albion last time out. Uh, you know, they were a stubborn team for Everton to try and break down in the game. Um, but, you know, Everton, this is what Everton are like. Unfortunately, they're a little bit inconsistent, uh, a lot a lot more inconsistent than I first realised as well. Only one win in their last seven. And uh, for a team that did so well in, in dribs and drabs this season, they really need to find some more consistency if they're going to push on and, uh, you know, take the team to the next level. You know, Gary Neville said a few weeks ago that he thought Everton were the team to break into the top uh, you know six or seven clubs at this moment Big questions are being asked because of their, you know, inconsistencies uh, in the league. Uh, Leicester went down to a very late winner to Cardiff. Uh, they had the chance to win this one from the spot. But Madison with a terrible penalty that was saved has cost them all three points on the day. If they take the lead in that game, they probably go on to win it. Um, Leicester, a lot like Everton, though, are very, very inconsistent, and they're more, you know, something that Everton haven't been finding recently is. It hard in front of goal. Leicester really, really are. They're struggling to score goals. Uh, they scored three goals in their last five games, and um, you know, and okay, they were winning goals against teams like uh, Chelsea and Manchester City. But when they face teams in and around them, that's when they really start to struggle. They need to turn it round against those teams, the teams that they are expected to be beating. Because if they don't, their season will go backwards. Uh, this is a very, very difficult one to predict. But Everton has got a very good record against Leicester, especially at home in recent history so I'm going to go with a home win to Everton. Uh, next we're going to talk Arsenal against Fulham my friends. This one isn't on TV but it's the only three o'clock um, kickoff on the day. Last five between these two in the Premier League have resulted in four wins to Arsenal and one draw. The last meet was a 5-1 win earlier this season when Arsenal demolished Fulham. Uh, Arsenal were on the end of an absolute demolishing though weren't they last time out. Uh, they took a shock lead they went 1-0 up against Liverpool uh, but it really wasn't a surprise that you know, Liverpool mounted the sort of comeback that they did. Uh, after a run of 22 games without defeat, they now have only one win in, uh, you know, their last few games and have conceded 10 goals in their last four games. And this is all coupled with the fact that they are without a lot of their first team defenders. They are down to the bare bones and they are struggling. And you could see the struggle was real against uh, Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool tore that defence, uh, you know, apart. They really, really did. That front three just had the day of their lives against Arsenal's uh, sort of makeshift back four, I guess you could call it. Um, you know, Mustafi even came off at halftime, was replaced by Koscielny. We don't know if his injury has flared up again, but a lot of these injuries have been long-term and it's a real struggle to get the players back. And it's kind of the reason why Arsenal are really, really struggling uh, at this moment in time. Uh, Fulham not only got a win, but they managed to keep a clean sheet and they also got that win after they missed a the penalty. And this can only be a Christmas miracle, ladies and gentlemen. It is the time of giving and 
They got themselves a lovely present in this one. A 1-0 win for Fulham was something I'm sure all Fulham fans didn't see coming. Uh, all jokes aside, though, you can see the hard work is starting to pay off with Ranieri. Uh, I did say in last week's prediction that I really didn't know where Fulham were going to go. And I didn't know if he was the man for the job. But having watched Fulham since the West Ham game, their defence has improved. They are struggling up top a little bit. But it was a great goal from Mitrovic. They win the game on the day and it was thoroughly, thoroughly deserved and will help them you know to try and fight off this relegation uh you know dog fight that is quite tight it's down there between you know four or five teams uh, as far as this one's concerned even with all of arsenal's injury problems i think they're going to take the victory in the game i do think fulham's going to put you know pose them some problems they've got some very good midfield players uh mitrovic obviously has been their star man up front this season i do expect them to score but i'm going to go over home win the gunners are going to win this one by two goals to one. Uh, the last game to take place on New Year's Day is, of course, going to take place between Cardiff and Tottenham Hotspur. It's live on Sky Sports, a 5.30 kickoff. Your hangover should be gone, but why not still sit down and watch this beautiful game? Uh, they've only met three times in the Premier League uh, and Tottenham have won on every occasion. Their last meet was a 1-0 victory and that's how it's finished on all three of those occasions. Uh, Cardiff, we all have to say, pulled off an amazing victory last time out. Uh, that th This is a team that no one fancied this season. At the beginning of the season, everybody was predicting they were going to finish bottom or in the relegation places. I know a few Cardiff fans have got in touch and said they thought they were going to finish, you know, 16th or 17th. And fair play, you, you seem to have really, really guessed this right. Because... You know, they're, they're doing a good job at attempting to stay in this league. And they're making the most of, you know, lapses in other team seasons as well. You know, there's a few teams that are down there we probably didn't expect. Burnley, one of them, uh, we're going to talk about later. But they're making the most of it. Uh, a lot of this win, though, has to go down to the goalkeeper, Efridge. Uh, you know... I was reading the stat that of the five penalties he's faced, he has saved three, and he saved one in this game, and it kind of gave them a chance to, you know, move on and win against Leicester. Uh, they have got their very, very own Superman in goal, and... I'm sure the manager and the team are so, so happy that he decided not to go off to the Asia Cup. And uh, talking of goals, what a goal it was by Carrasco, uh, picking that ball up and bending it in at the top corner. It is one uh, that they will never, never forget. They're, the only thing they've got to hope is they don't lose him in January. He is only on loan and there's talk that he might have to return uh, to Raul Betis, I believe it is, who, the club they have him on loan from. Uh, Tottenham were being talked about this weekend as dark horses in the Premier League uh, especially by me as well in last uh, last week's show. Um, but they've bottled it straight off the bat, haven't they? There was plenty of memes doing the round. There was a bottle with the Spurs sign on. I said it was made with the tears of Harry Kane. And we was all having a bit of a laugh on social media. I wish I hadn't bothered after the result that West Ham just did. But it really is mad that, you know, we were all saying how good they were. They were the dark horses, uh, you know, in with an outside chance. And then Wolves turn up at Wembley and do an absolute number on them. When you watch the first half back, though, you can't look past the Tottenham win. It was just a completely different team in that second half. And it was just a very odd thing to happen as well. Uh, they're going to need to bounce back straight away. They are now nine points off of Liverpool, which is a massive gap, even at this stage, and especially with the way Liverpool are winning. They've got it in the tank to go and win football games. Just the inconsistencies sometimes, uh, you know, of, of the way they play, but they just couldn't get going in that second half. Uh, do I think that Spurs are going to lose back-to-back? -back? Probably not. You know, Cardiff had to work very, very hard. Uh, there's only a few, game, a few days between the games. I think it might be a bit much for Cardiff, I'm going to go with an away win on the day, a 2-0 to Tottenham. Uh, you're now going to see the fixtures coming on your screen, ladies and gents. These are the majority of these are 745 kickoffs that are taking place on Wednesday, and there's one 8 o'clock thrown in there for good measure. And the first one we're going to talk about is Bournemouth, and they are going to be taking on Watford. Uh, last five in the Premier League between these two teams are one win each and three draws thrown in there. It's usually a very tight affair, although earlier this season when they last met, a 4-0 win to Bournemouth was pretty sad sensational. Uh, Bournemouth soundly beaten by Manchester United. I'm recording this just after that game has finished. Uh, Man United were just very, very quick out the blocks and Bournemouth didn't have time to get themselves set and the game was gone before they decided to really give it a go. Um, 
Their form's gone backwards lately, only one win in their last five. And a bit like Everton and Leicester, like I was saying, inconsistencies have started to creep into the team. They do have a few injuries. And uh, I think, you know, there's a few things I see on social media that they're worried about rele relegation. They do not need to worry about relegation. They are far too good to be dragged into that. I think they will pick up points against other teams. Manchester United are in a run at the moment uh, under a new manager where it was always going to be a very, very tough day at the office. And uh, it's just one of those things. I am sure they will find that winning feeling once again uh, very, very soon. Uh, Watford experienced, uh, you know, have experienced a pretty decent form, I would say, of late. But um, they would consider a home draw against Newcastle to be disappointing. You know, Newcastle has um, not had the best seasons. Uh, these are the teams they sometimes underestimate. They're a bit like West Ham, really, in, in that respect. They underestimate, in, in my opinion, and they just give them far too much of a chance. Had a lot of work to do after going 1-0 down to Newcastle. Did save a draw, though. But um, they do only have one loss in their last five, nine scored. So they're going okay. They just need to sort that defence out. Uh, you know, conceded... Uh, you know, seven. Um, it feels like they always, always, always need to go and score one more uh, than they really need to. You know, it's almost like they know they're going to have to chase the game eventually. But it's one of those things that you just, if you're a Watford fan, it's probably exciting to watch, but you never feel like you're guaranteed a win. Um, and I'm sure they want to get back to the form of earlier in the season where they were keeping some clean sheets. Uh, this has been a tight fixture over the uh, uh, in recent history. I can't really separate the two teams. I am going to go with a draw. I know it's a bit boring, but I'm going to go with a 1-1 uh, on the day. Uh, Chelsea versus Southampton is the game we're going to talk about next. Last five in the Premier League between these two teams. Uh, Chelsea have won all five. They absolutely absolutely love playing Southampton at the moment. Uh, the last meet was a 3-0 victory to Chelsea earlier on this season at St Mary's. Uh, Chelsea found a way past Crystal Palace eventually, but it was a very, very tough day at the office against a team that defended very, very well. Um... For me, a lot of Chelsea's problem in the game was that their build-up was very slow and very pedestrian. Uh, too many touches, and the you know they just didn't get forward quick enough. They actually look far more dangerous on the counter attack than they do when they have to dominate a game. But they were allowed a lot of possession. This was one of the game sorts of games they were always going to dominate from the off, and they need to find a way of breaking down teams quicker. One two touch passes might help them a lot. The balls over the top with in runners was working. It worked a few times, just unfortunately were you know flagged offside. But the one time they weren't, you know, Engolo Kante managed to get in the box and slides it past the goalkeeper. It was a good win for Chelsea. I just feel like they do find it very, very difficult to break teams down. I've been saying for a long time as well, they're a centre forward away from really, really challenging and they may need to go and attack the market in January to go and get that striker. Uh, Southampton uh, coming to this one off the back of a loss to Manchester City. I think a loss that we all expected to happen. Um, you know... They did put Manchester City's defence under pressure, though. They had a few chances and forced some good saves out of Edison. Uh, they did score a very, very good goal as well through Hoiberg. A, a lovely touch. Uh, you know, they, they nicked the, bo the ball off Sinchenko, but a nice touch. And he hammered that in the top corner. Unfortunately, though, he is one of their better players, but they're going to be without him because he got sent off in the game. Silly, silly sending off. And even though they lost by three goals to one, I think a big shout-out has to go to McCarthy in goal because if it wasn't for him, and I think he maybe should have done better for the grow a header but if it wasn't for him it probably could have been six or seven he, he did have a really good game at the office and kept them in the game for a majority of it uh, you can still see improvements in Southampton this is one of those games where they never really we, none of us would have really thought they were going to get anything from it they have to get rid of this one they're on a real tough run of games though at the moment and they need to find a win from somewhere uh, do I think they're going to do it against Chelsea probably not I'm going to go over home win a 2-0 to Chelsea next we're going to talk Huddersfield versus Burnley, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, these two have only met three times in the Premier League. They have all finished in the way of a draw and uh, the last meet was a 1-1 earlier this season. Uh, with those, uh, only those two goals in that 1-1 draw being the goals that have been scored in this game, it does suggest it's going to be a tight affair. It's not always boring, but uh, this is a massive six-pointer. They're both down there in the relegation places and they're both looking for points. They had both been on poor runs, but Burnley obviously have changed that with a good win over West Ham, which we'll talk about shortly. But Huddersfield 
Huddersfield suffered defeat to Fulham last time out. Massive disappointment against, uh, you know, a relegation rival. And they're, you know, now starting to be cut adrift a little from the pack. They're five points from safety. And I just don't know where the next win is going to come from. Uh, some could argue they're playing as well as they did last year. They're just not scoring the goals and they're just not keeping the goals out the right, you know, at the other end. And uh, when that's not happening, you're not going to get wins. You're not going to get draws and you're not going to be picking up those points. I don't know if any Huddersfield fans watch this, but where do you think your club needs to go from here? I'd be really, really interested. Do you think you need to change manager? And uh, do you think this current manager can save your season? Uh, Burnley were sensational against West Ham. Um, I am always... I always try to be as honest as I can on this show. Obviously, I'm a West Ham fan, so there is some slight bias, but they were sensational. West Ham did not deserve a thing from that game. If that's the level that Deitch gets Burnley playing in this second half of the season, they will have no worries about relegation, I can tell you that. That is the sort of performance that either kickstarts your season or just shows the players that they really, really need to be you know, performing at a higher level. They were great. They scored two goals. They could have scored a lot more. You know, West Ham could have lost that game by five or six um, and that's not an over you know over exaggeration either they really were that good Burnley and uh, you know they, they restricted West Ham uh, at the back to barely a sniff the one time West Ham had a really good chance Tommy and stood in the way and palmed a, a sensational header from uh, a, a Andy Carroll um, up onto the bar it was a brilliant save it just shows you what a difference a great keeper can make as well but it, it really was and it, it was like watching a completely different Burnley I didn't give them a chance hell in my prediction last time out and uh, kind of regret it now because it was really really good performance now based on the fact that they've drawn three games uh, in the you know their last three meets and uh, the fact that I think they're quite hard uh, to kind of separate at this moment of time they are both in the bottom three that's a one-off from Burnley can they make it uh, you know back-to-back -back wins can they do it again we'll have to wait and see with the small gap they may be tired because they did run all over the place but I'm going to go with a draw on the day I'm going to go with a 1-1 one -one. um Next up, we are going to talk West Ham United as they take on their bogey team, Brighton and Hove Albion, uh, this time out. Uh, only met three times in the Premier League, of course, but Brighton and Hove Albion have won on all three occasions. The last meet was a very narrow 1-0 win to Brighton earlier this season, and uh, West Ham just do not like playing them. West Ham were an embarrassment against Burnley. I know I've literally just touched upon this, but I have to talk about it from a West Ham point of view. Um, they just did not want it from kickoff. Burnley wanted it more straight away and uh, not one player can come out of that game with their head held above water head held high and say they did everything they could have for the football club uh, I, I think Ogbonna and Noble have to take particular blame for that performance um, Noble didn't marshal his troops in the midfield it didn't have a captain's performance Ogbonna could not uh, you know clean out his internet history he was awful could not clear it out I think Arnautovic come back from injury but did that he had no effect on the game I think maybe he was rushed back a little bit too early and looking at the size of him looks like he's enjoyed Christmas a little bit too much I still don't think he is completely fit but it's a missed opportunity for West Ham again with a win in this game with the results the way they've gone they could have gone seventh that's twice this has happened now where we could have gone seventh and we have just fucked it up on both occasions it's the only way we can put it and it's because the mentality just isn't there in the football club Pellegrini is trying to endorse this big club mentality but it just isn't there with some of the players and I think they're They'll have to be weeded out eventually. We've got some guys there that want to push on, but you can see the pressure gets to some of the, you know, the, the other guys. There's going to be no Mark Noble for the Brighton game. He picked up his fifth yellow card, so he will be serving a one-match ban. It is what it is. Probably won't be missed if the, uh, the uh, Burnley uh, game is anything to go by, though. Um... I think Brian Lowe Albion uh, pulled off a really good win against Everton uh, last time out. Uh, there was obviously some controversy where the goal was concerned. It was uh, initially flagged offside, then it was given. Uh, when I looked at it, it's, uh, it's a perfectly good goal. Um, it was a, a very tight affair against Everton, but they've done well. But the difference is... When they play at home, the fans make all the difference. I think their fans realise the importance of each match they play at home because they're terrible on the bloody road. They love going to West Ham, though. They've won there on the one occasion they've been there, but they're just not as effective on the road as they are at home. And if they could get the supporters behind them on the road, it might help. But they're going to have to... Um, 
sort that out eventually. You can't rely on your home form every single season. You play 19 games there, and eventually there'll come a season where you're just not picking it up, you know, the results at home, and it's just not happening. You're going to have to get that if you want to push on as a Premier League team and secure your status in this league, you know, for the long term. Um, you know, I think that they're, I think that they're there or thereabouts sort of to staying up in the league, but they need that if they want to push on. Um, all things considered... West Ham have to break this duck eventually against Brighton. We have to beat them eventually. To be fair, I'd kind of decided on this result before I see that performance against Burnley. But surely, surely, surely West Ham can't go and repeat that performance. That's the worst performance for me this season against Brighton. I'm going to go with a narrow 1-0 victory to West Ham. But... Let's not be surprised if Brighton turn us over because they absolutely love playing us. Uh, next, we are going to talk Wolves versus Crystal Palace, ladies and gents. Uh, they've only met twice. Uh, sorry, only met once before in the Premier League and it was one win for Wolves. It was obviously earlier this season, a very one, a narrow 1-0 victory on the day. Uh, what a win for Wolves last time out. Has to go down as performance of the week. I know a lot of people probably would have given it to Liverpool, but they were playing a below par Arsenal with injuries. This Wolves team have gone and beat Spurs, who are on a hell of a run, scoring goals for fun, and did an absolute number on Spurs in the second half. Uh, they weren't in it in the first half, but when they came out in the second half, they were a completely different team. Willie Bonney's towering header got them underway, and then from there, they just pushed on and pushed on and pushed on. Jimenez grabbed himself a goal, and I see a very interesting stat about Jimenez. He has been involved in more key chances than any other player in the Premier League this season, uh, or more, more uh, goal chances, I should say, and I believe it was like 10 or 11. I haven't written the stat down but that's quite interesting he's been involved in so many of his team uh, so many team goals this year um he really is important to them a lot of people say because he doesn't score enough he isn't that important but he sets up goals and he brings people into play as well he's a he's a real you know one of those key elements in that machine and uh, it was just a solid a solid win and I, I can't quite believe they managed to do it because they looked dead in the water in the first half but you know they're, they're in a solid run of form at the moment only one defeat in their last five and they you know that was to league leaders Liverpool and even in that game they were in it for the best part and it you know made it harder for Liverpool than some other teams have this season uh, Crystal Palace set up to frustrate Chelsea in their game and they did that for the majority of it obviously Chelsea did eventually break them down did score a goal um, but you could see why Crystal Palace hadn't conceded in their previous three home fixtures. It's a tough place to go and win football games at the moment. Um, it's you know, a solid defence throughout, but once again, they struggled up top. Um, didn't register a shot on target, I believe. And, uh, you know... Uh, a lot of Palace fans did say in last in the comment section of last week's prediction that they need a striker, and I really, really do completely and utterly agree with them. Obviously, you know, Ben Teke's been out for the best part of this season. Uh, you know, Wickham's only just coming back. Zaha cannot play that lone striker role. It just doesn't suit him. He, he, he's, he is far more effective when he drifts in from wide, a bit like Townsend has been recently. Um, but... You know, they've got to start converting the chances. They didn't create that many against Chelsea, in all fairness, but they did have some good, good opportunities to score a goal and potentially nick a point. And, you know, since they beat um, Manchester City, they've been on a good run of form. This is going to be seen as a bit of a disappointment, but they were pretty good on the day. And they're a tough, tough team to beat. And I think that Wolves are going to find it very, very tough. Crystal Palace are better at home than they are on the road. I'm going to go with a 2-1 to Wolves. I know they might be a bit gassed from that, you know, excellent victory against Tottenham, but at home with their fans and with this run of form, I think they can do it against Crystal Palace, a 2-1 on the day to Wolves. Uh, next, we are going to talk about the last game to take place on uh, Wednesday, and it is between Newcastle, Manchester United, and 8 o'clock kickoff live on Sky Sports. Sit down, watch it, enjoy it, my friends. I obviously won't be because I'll be over the London Stadium watching West Ham against Brighton. But uh, last five in the Premier League between these two teams, Teams. Newcastle have got one win, Manchester United have got two wins and two draws for there for good measure. Last beat was a 3-2 win to Manchester United when they made that sensational comeback earlier this season. Uh, Newcastle battled to a solid draw, in my opinion, against Watford. I thought Watford were going to be far too strong for them, but they turned up and did a job. Uh, Rondon was a constant menace in this game, and if he could lead the, lead the line like this and add goals to his game the way, you know, we all 
think that he can, he would be a far more effective player for him. He would be a real, real handful. But unfortunately, he just doesn't score enough goals and does spurn quite a few as well. Um, it's been a real problem all season, though, hasn't it, for Newcastle? It's been so up and down. We really don't know what to expect from them. But goal scoring especially, you know, they average under a goal a game. I think it was 0 0.76. And if you're not scoring goals, you're not going to win football games. Uh, you know, earlier on in the season, they were just setting up to take draws and yes they did take a few 1-1s and stuff but you've got to win games especially when you're down there battling relegation they're very very close to the relegation zone and this draw was you know it was a healthy draw it helps them but they need bodies they need a striker but they're not going to get it the manager needs help but the board just are not going to help Mike Ashley's killing this football club and it's sad to see because Newcastle always one of those clubs are kind of always I thought quite fondly of and Rafa is basically swimming upstream isn't he and uh, yeah it's just not good for him uh, Man United swept Bournemouth aside uh, another brilliant display from them and uh, Oli has this team playing with without fear and with the will and want to win every single game and every single challenge and every they want to be first to every ball and it's just it's you know it's, it's scary to see, but I'm sure as a Manchester United fan, it is brilliant to see. They're playing with such freedom. The whole team always looks forward when they pass. You know, Matic doesn't pass sideways and backwards anymore. He always turns and tries to pick out a pass forward. Pogba and Rashford both epitomise this newfound will to win and the philosophy that uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has brought into the club, uh, especially that, who now has four goals in two games. He started to add that to his game. We all knew that Pogba was, you know, we all knew he was uh, capable of doing this. He was just restricted by the previous manager. I guess one of the big questions, though, is uh, will Pogba remain at Manchester United in January? I, I, but me personally, I think he will under the new manager. He's got, you know, um, he's been given a, a, a new role and uh, it's a refreshing new role for him. He seems to be enjoying it. He's dabbing again. He's probably the only person left in the world that does dab, but he seems like he's loving it. But obviously there's big talk that a move away could be on the cards. Will it happen, Manchester United fans? And another big one is, will Oli Gunnar Solskjaer get the full-time job? Would you like to see Oli get the job at the end of the season? He's doing a brilliant job right now and they're playing some very, very good football. Uh, they are obviously going to be without Baye for the next game was sent off in the fixture against Bournemouth. A big miss because he is obviously one of their better defenders. Uh, do I see Newcastle beating Manchester United? No, no, no. I think the Oli train rolls on. They're going to win this one by two goals to nil. And the last game we need to talk about, my friends, is of course the Thursday fixture. You will see it making its way onto the screen. It's my game of the week. And it's my game of the week because we could have massive implications in the Premier League as Manchester City meet Liverpool. And this is on Sky Sports an 8 o'clock kickoff and I am pretty sure no one is going to want to miss this game uh, the last five meets between these two teams in the Premier League have finished with one win two Manchester City two wins to Liverpool two draws the last meet was a nil-nil earlier this season and uh, this is massive because if Liverpool win this game they're pretty much nailed on to win the league this season. This is the team they need to beat if they want to win the big one. Uh, Manchester City come into this one, uh, you know, on a poor run of form by their standards. They may have beat Southampton last time out by three goals to one, but they have suffered three defeats in their last five in the league. And they came to Chelsea, Crystal Palace and Leicester the last two games. Obviously, massive shocks as far as defeat is concerned. Uh, the defence has looked shaky. It's still didn't look at its best against Southampton. It was rotated again. Uh, you know, Danilo coming, you know, to the team. Uh, Zinchenko came into the team at left back. Uh, the left back area is obviously one they're worried about because a few of the players have taken knocks. Um, it's a concern, the defence, and they can be got at. Even Southampton managed to nick the ball and score a goal against them. They do look far more assured, though, in the midfield when Fernandinho is in there. Um, he is uh, a big miss when he's been missing, but he was back in this one, and you just don't realise how much of an asset he is to the team. He senses danger, he helps his back four, he really ties things together, and he drives the team forward. He is a, re a real good, good player in that team, and I think he's the work that he does is sometimes under 
undervalued. Um, they were very, very good. They found the back of the net a few times. That can only do good things for their confidence. But surely Liverpool must be looking at this uh, defence and licking their chops, especially with the way their front three are playing at the moment. Um, you know, Liverpool were electric against Arsenal, a constant menace. OK, they went 1-0 down. They were, were caught out, but they fought back. You know, they put the ball in the back of the net with a couple of penalties. Uh, Bobby Firm's goal, where he took it through the Arsenal defence, was quite sensational. And you just can't look past them at the moment. And they, they just, they're playing so well. They're winning ugly. They're winning pretty. They're scoring loads of goals. They're defending. They're keeping clean sheets. That was only their eighth goal they've conceded all season. Um, you know, the pass from the goalkeeper to set up one of the goals. It's just, everything is going right. And when you win the league, this is the sort of thing that usually happens they are such a force this season and one of my questions to you is if they beat Manchester City can they be stopped surely it's nailed on ladies and gents but do let me know in the comment section below um, this is their biggest challenger though this is the biggest game of the season for Liverpool to this point and I'm sure they know that can they get the victory in this one it's going to be a very very interesting game to sit down and watch the gap's massive at the moment but if they win this one then uh, the gap will be 10 points won't it I believe so that could be huge who do I think is going to win the game? Now, usually I bottle it and go with a draw in this uh, instance, but I've actually picked the winner. And I'm going to go with Liverpool to win the game by two goals to one. I just think at this current moment in time, they're one of the best teams in the world. And I think Manchester City are going to suffer. So there you are, my friends. We are all done and dusted here for another week of the Premier League show. I just want to take this moment now to say a very happy new year to you all. Thank you for making 2018 such a special one on the channel. Uh, your continued support is appreciated by yours truly. And I will see you in 2019 where we are going to get bigger and better, my friends. But uh, if you're new to the channel, please like, share and subscribe. That's really appreciated by me. But until next time, peace out, my homies. I salute you all. Hope your teams do well in the new uh in the new day fixtures i will see you in the new year have a good one my friends see you next time <laughs>